from CBS News Bay Area. This is the Afternoon Edition. And right now in the Afternoon Edition, it's been more than 24 hours since a cargo ship slammed into a major bridge in Baltimore. Bringing it down, that collapse sparking more questions on what exactly went wrong. Good afternoon, I'm Ryan Yamamoto. Federal investigators have recovered the data recorder from the ship, which is essentially the black box, and they are now beginning to develop a timeline of events. It will provide us with a number of parameters, everything from location to positioning of the ship to speed. And yesterday's crash was caught on video shows the moment that massive container ship slammed into the support column of Baltimore's Key Bridge, sending a large portion of that structure into the river. A closer look at the video shows the ship heading south at about 1.24 a.m. when the lights go dark but quickly on again. A minute later, plumes of black smoke can be seen billowing from the ship's chimney. Once again, it appears the ship loses its lights, and then a minute after, they come back on. The vessel then slams into the bridge. C-13 dispatch, the whole bridge just fell down. Start, start, whoever, everybody. The whole bridge just collapsed. Do we know if all traffic was stopped? I can't get to the other side, sir. The bridge is down. We're going to have to get somebody on the other side. And recovery efforts resumed today for the six construction workers on the bridge at that time of the collapse, including 49-year-old Miguel Luna, a father of three, and 38-year-old Menor Sandoval. His family says he was originally from Honduras, but had been living in the U.S. for the last 18 years. He was married with an 18-year-old son and a five-year-old daughter. Baltimore's Key Bridge is the gateway to the city's port, which would generates close to $3 billion of annual business. It is also the nation's busiest port for cars, trucks, and sugar. They employ more than 15,000 people. And the Key Bridge collapse is not expected to have an impact on the Port of Oakland here in the Bay Area, but it could cause some disruptions in the supply chain since right now the Port of Baltimore is blocked. President Joe Biden says the federal government will pay to rebuild that bridge. Here in the Bay Area, the Golden Gate and the Bay Bridges see container and cruise ships all the time. And the Old Bay Bridge, bridge took a couple of big hits during a six-year span. Both times, the bridge stood its ground. Caltrans tells our Wilson Walker that's by design. This is the most seismically advanced bridge ever designed. Right, the eastern span of the Bay Bridge. It's not just the fender system, but Caltrans Bartnay talking about the first line of defense on the new Bay Bridge, and that is the fender system that you see here. And while this one is unique to the tower foundation of the eastern span, there is something like this on every bridge in the Bay Area. So some of those systems have completely different foundations, so they never actually touch the bridge. Other bridges have the fenders designed into their foundations, so they're designed to actually crumple and absorb the energy. The idea is that the vessel never actually hits the bridge structure. So imagine as people travel around the Bay Area, they're going to see some different engineering, but it's all doing the same thing. That's that's 100 percent correct, because we've got all different. It's almost a bridge zoo in the Bay Area. You've got so many different types of bridges. It's depending on where you're at, the fender system has been designed for that particular bridge. Yesterday's operations were hampered by reduced visibility. And the problem that we've really had with the illusions that we've seen has been when oil tankers hit them, the ship takes the damage, not the bridge. The ships don't make it to the bridge, and that's by design. But if it's an oil tanker, then suddenly you've got oil to deal with in the bay. You pick it up, and it's just that consistency of that, of that goo. In this respect, the Costco Busan spill is evidence that the fender system can work. But what about the circumstances as we understand them in Baltimore with a large ship landing a direct hit at a pretty good speed? And so that impact is being reported at being about eight knots, and which is significant for a ship of that size. Yeah. But had we seen something like that here on one of our bay bridges, the fender systems are designed to withstand that. And it's not just the fenders. All of the bay's bridges have been retrofitted some several times over, so they all have an added factor of resilience in the event of a collision. And so that's another advantage to, to California. Because of the earthquakes, we've had to design our bridges so that they can absorb energy. So even if, if you get the bridge actually being touched, all of our bridges have got the ability to move a little bit. But the idea really is, is not to have a vessel hit the structure. 
And we'll continue to update you on the Baltimore Bridge collapse on air and online at kpix.com and on the free CBS News app. Okay, first alert weather right now. Here's a live look at the Golden Gate Bridge. A gloomy afternoon, very gray outside. Rain is expected to return to the Bay Area. It could have an impact on the evening commute. Let's check in with meteorologist Paul Diano is in our virtual studio tracking the wet weather. Paul, I brought my big boy jacket and my umbrella today. Uh, you are wise and you listen to the forecast. We always appreciate that. Yeah, later on today, you're going to need it when everybody's finished work. That's going to be the wet part of the day. We are beginning to see the rain move into portions uh, of the North Bay and also the East Bay, but we're just talking scattered showers. The main event does not arrive until later. That said, out toward Rio Vista, Fairfield and the Delta, we are seeing a few showers right now. Most of the rain continues north of Santa Rosa, even north of Ukiah, where it's just raining lightly in Ukiah and Mendocino County. Uh, the rain will work its way south, but it is taking its time to do that. Here are the temperatures right now. San Jose, you had some early sunshine, so you're one of our warm spots. In the Santa Clara Valley, uh, you're sitting at 63 degrees. Livermore, the Tri-Valley, 59. It's only 55 in San Francisco and Concord currently, 57 degrees. Speaking of Concord, you'll make it up to 60. That's it. Cooler than average. Cloudy, but your rain will likely not arrive until about 4 o'clock this afternoon. But then when the rain gets here, you're going to be stuck with it for several hours after that. So let's take a look at what we can expect temperature wise this afternoon. Some of you in the South Bay, it's going to be several more hours before the rain gets here. So San Jose, you're likely to hit 67. Las Gatos, not that far behind. Uh, Redwood City, a high of 63. Oakland with rain moving in about 4 o'clock, 62 degrees. San Francisco, 60. And where it's already raining in the North Bay, your highs today will only be in the mid to upper 50. It's been cloudy all day long. Coming up. Two storms. We just talked about the beginning of one. We've got another one to talk about. And that one's going to last two days. That's coming up in a few minutes. Ryan, back to you. All right, thanks, Paul. Well, to Oakland now, we're in less than an hour. Mary Sheng Tao will formally introduce the city's new police chief. Floyd Mitchell will be in front and center at City Hall today. Mitchell resigned from the Lubbock Police Department. He has been in the running for Oakland's job for months. His first day will be in late April or May. The city has been without a chief for more than a year now after the mayor fired Chief Leron Armstrong. In the South Bay, the race to replace Congresswoman Anna Eshi was still a toss-up more than three weeks after the primary election. Look at this razor-thin margin that continues to separate the candidates. As of the latest update, Supervisor Joe Simidian leads Assemblymember Evan Lowe by just two votes. Two votes. They're fighting to face Sam Licardo in that November general election.